one of the things that I'm doing is I'm responsible for uh, development of um, um, civil society, Eastern Partnership Civil Society Platform for Culture, which we call Natasha. Um, and uh, this is a very open, informal group of uh, different people and organizations from all over the Europe, which are dealing with uh, development and sustainable development of, uh, of culture in, in Eastern Europe. Uh, we are trying to uh, connect our activities and somehow uh, fulfill our activities and, and knowledge and capacities, but also exchange, exchange experiences, uh, different models of working, uh, and um, exchange discourse about um, Europe, uh, what is Europe, what is Eastern, Western Europe, uh, should we somehow divide it, this uh, um, Europe into A, B or, or C. <laughs> um, and uh, we are also trying to discuss different uh, processes which are going on in Eastern Europe now and what is going on in uh, EU, for example, how we can analyze uh, different processes and experiences from the past, like, uh, uh, for example, in Poland with uh, Second World War, communism, all these processes that are, that are now somehow going on in, uh, in Eastern Europe after the collapse of the uh, Soviet Union. So we can somehow compare these processes and uh, use the knowledge of um, uh, Central Europe, ex-communist countries, to um, somehow avoid different problems, but also um, exchange um, knowledge about how you can go further, uh, discover different um, uh, territories, processes, uh, link people, uh, even if you don't have money, even if you have uh, governmental problems, even uh, if there are problems with visas, so you can do it, but, but the power is in, in people, actually. <laughs> so um, Natasha is trying to develop this kind of uh, activities, uh, so talks, discussions, but also linking the people and linking activities to to be more powerful also and influence somehow on uh, governments, uh, at least local governments in, uh, in Eastern Europe. Uh, we have realized uh, in Lublin with the community of culture managers, artists, that uh, our value for Europe as the city of Lublin is actually cooperation with Eastern Europe, with Ukraine, with Belarus, um, and we can bring uh, um, more energy, more um, um, fresh air, <laughs> blood, um, to um, already stable Europe, yes, which uh, somehow in some point I think stuck uh, in the middle and doesn't know what to do, where to go. Everything started to be unique and uh, not unique but universal all the grants, all the projects were somehow uh, the same. And uh, mm, because of different grants, because of different uh, possibilities that uh, uh, European Commission, U European Union were giving to these countries, after some time, uh, I have this feeling and this observation that uh, uh, in, in all the EU, yes, all the, these, these first countries that became uh, um, European Union, everything started to be some, somehow equal, somehow uh, there was no diversity in the activities and thinking. And uh, when I went for the first time to Ukraine and Belarus and I saw how the people are working and thinking and uh, how we can think differently about uh, um, common work and um, uh, simple activities that we do, I was really surprised very positively that, uh, wow, this is a it's completely different world. This is how I would like to work 
uh, in a very creative and very to to totally different way. The geographical position of the city is, of Lublin is uh, very uh, specific because we are uh, very close to the border with Ukraine. We, we, we are uh, closer to Lviv than to any other city, bigger city in Poland. So um, for, for us, for, especially for culture sector, it was really like kind of natural to work with uh, the city, especially with the city of Lviv, which is really just next to Lublin, um, to work with Ukraine on Belarus uh, instead of uh, Wrocław, Warsaw, uh, Poznań, uh, bigger, richer cities uh, which were already developed, uh, w which were developing quicker um, and uh, than, than the city of Lublin. And actually the, the idea of Eastern Partnership was launched in 19... 98, I think, I don't remember exactly the year, by Sweden and Poland, by two, two governments, that uh, they would like to cooperate with Eastern European countries on enlargement of the EU, but also on um, development of different economical, social, cultural processes in these countries, and um, make easier the... Um, the, the um, somehow flow of, uh, of ideas, um, trade between EU and uh, Eastern, Eastern Europe. And uh, so thanks to this idea of Eastern Partnership, European Commission and the, the countries like Poland, like Sweden and other countries started to uh, bring also more money for this initiative. Uh, and uh, so the, there was more and more possibilities to include people from Eastern Europe to different kind of uh, bigger initiatives and, uh, uh, and cooperation. And uh, because we did know anything about uh, Caucasus, for example, and what is going on in Moldova, so uh, we said we have to start from kind of a meeting meet people yes yeah? so this is what we do if you don't know you ask you search you meet you meet people and we decided to create to, to launch a kind of a congress or a meeting for eastern partnership countries in the in the frame of culture sector in 2012 uh, in lublin uh, there was first eastern partnership culture congress uh, we invited many people and there were like more than 300 people came from uh, Eastern Partnership countries, but also from uh, from uh, from all over the Europe, uh, there were ministers, so representatives of ministries of culture, of the local governments, of culture sector, NGO, public institutions. So, a uh, very big range of people, and we just trying to talk. Yeah, what is going on in Eastern Partnership? What does it mean Eastern Partnership? Do you believe in that? Yeah, do, do we believe in that as, as European citizens, as uh, people working in culture sector? Uh, do, we, uh, do we need this kind of names, uh, labels, uh, or we create another borders? And uh, everybody said that at the beginning, that the Eastern Partnership, uh, it's, it's a completely favorite program. And it, it doesn't work like this, that you need... Um, uh, it, each country is so different that you cannot put it into one group and you cannot cooperate with everyone at the same time that you need to concentrate or on Ukraine or on Belarus or Moldova Caucasus countries is also completely a different world and they have completely different problems and they also are in conflicts like with Armenia with Azerbaijan also Turkey is in conflict with Armenia so it's also difficult to bring some people together and um, also in some countries there's still this dictatorship, Azerbaijan and, and Belarus. It's uh, um, the communication facing the world is that uh, yeah, in these countries is democracy, peace and whatever, but actually the real life is completely different. So we find out something a little bit. We, heard, we gave the voice for the of the people for the people who are living there who are re really working there uh, and 
on the peaceful territory in Poland, they could say in front of different European representatives, we feel this and we feel that, yes, and that's the reality. And um, in the smaller groups with uh, the participants of the Congress, we were trying to somehow get together some kind of recommendations for European Commission, for uh, local governments of uh, these countries of Eastern Partnership, uh, what should be done, how, with whom they should work, uh, that the money should go not to the um, governments, but to the people, to the networks. Uh, independent uh, culture should be supported. And from bottom-up initiatives, you can build something more. And uh, then, uh, two years after, in 2013, we, we organized another congress uh, to see what are the results, uh, how is developing the, the culture sector there, how is the movement between EU and, uh, um, and Eastern Partnership countries, how other countries are involved into this Eastern Partnership uh, region. And uh, um, during the second Congress appears this idea of build uh, independent uh, network group uh, platform of people working with the Eastern Partnership countries called Natasha, as I said before. So um, we felt that uh, with different people that there is a need to have kind of a body, yes, organization structure which is completely independent from east from uh, which is not eastern europe eu which is a common uh, idea um, that gets together uh, independent organizations or uh, bodies which are not involved in political systems in uh, local governments or national governments and who are really working with the people yes and who who knows the needs of the people I also have this reflection that after a few years of cooperation that uh, uh, when you don't have money, when you don't have possibilities, when you have really big problems in the country, in the city because of policy, because of economy, society, uh, you are trying more and you have to try more to find possibilities to do what you want to do to become, to stay independent in Belarus, you have to pay a lot of money, you have to really be careful, you have to sustain, you have to maintain your uh, territory, uh, you have to really fight. And they are doing it, and they are very successful. And uh, sometimes I think that uh, if we have more possibilities, money, power, uh, and we have everything on the table, just we have to take it, that we lose this, um, uh, this energy, this um, uh, creativity, imagination, um, that uh, we have everything so we don't have to take care of uh, uh, quality, of people, of uh, um, uh, diversity of activities and thinking, because for what? We have everything. And sometimes I have this feeling that, yeah, uh, this is what also we can learn from, from Eastern Europe, how to be more entrepreneurship, how to, uh, how to uh, find different ways of solutions. Um, because, well, this is how, this is how they, they work and this is really amazing. I'm really, I'm really surprised uh, how they are. I'm, it's a really big challenge and it's, I admire them for that.